So yeah, I'll be talking about the background and then uh, some motivation behind this topic. Then a kind of a taxonomy, which is uh, related to mental health perspective. And then regarding some discussions about computational approaches and then cause detection, causal explanation, cause categorization, then addressing some challenges and new frontiers and then some summary. So if I talk about social me me media and mental health, so when we speak about uh, social media, when we communicate to each other via social media, we tend to express our thoughts and ideas via social media and we are very happy about it. But then it is not always necessary that uh, we are always happy about the thoughts and ideas and feelings which we have to share with our peers and address. Sometimes there is wake booking. That means people are tend to attract the audience or the people or their friends who they want to share their griefs and problems which they, they have in their uh, life. So that is why they use social media. So most of the pro such problems have been addressed in uh, Reddit social media platform with uh, subreddits like depression, suicide watch. And then they address in Gab, Gab social media platform, Twitter social media platform, Facebook, and so on. And the list is countless. If we talk about the background of this, uh, this issue, then we can see that uh, near about 1.6 million people in England were on the waiting list for mental health care. That means people actually want the diagnosis of their mental health in person uh, sessions with clinical psychologists, but there is problem with the availability of clinical psychologists. So estimated that 8 million people could not get specialist help as they were not considered sick enough to qualify. Unfortunately, in our society, uh, this clinical psychology related things like mental illness is not considered to be sick. But it is a very serious issue because it is a leading cause of suicide, one of the le leading cause of suicide. So such statistics above induce the need for automation in mental health care. So this is what we need to uh, concentrate in the upcoming research. Uh, this is the upcoming research uh, thrust area. So why social media? Why are we considering only social media when we are considering people uh, automation in mental health care? Because when people talk about their mental health, they kind of disclose their emotions and feelings, which they tend to do more often on social media platforms rather than any other platforms. Why? Because they are more comfortable in sharing and disclosing the information towards the audience to whom they want to reach out or which the audience which they want them to reach to them. So that is why 80% of the patients do not undergo clinical psychological psychologists treatments with mental health practitioners. So the self-disclosure is a significant curative component of social well-being in this context. Research community emphasizes on the use of computational intelligence techniques for mental health analysis on social media. So one of the key components is computational linguistics other than the computational social science. So we'll be concentrating on computational linguistics in this talk. If we talk about the mental health care perspective, so mental health perspective is related to different aspects and it deals with the social aspect that how people are socially connected to each other, how they are psychologically connected to each other, how they are computationally 
evaluate how the mental health is evaluated computationally and how are the, how it is evaluated biomedically so that is why we'll be talking about the online social media data which is handled using computational aspect in this talk so if we talk about computational approach then we have two types of significant studies which have been well established in recent years since 2013 these studies are uh, people are undergoing these studies related to mental health analysis on social media so chancellor and choudhury are the two people who have done uh, path breaking work in these areas and they have classified uh, the information for example if we are having any text if the user has given any post that post needs to be segregated into is it is the person normal or he is having suicidal tendency so this kind of classification is required it is actually required if we do such classification it will be easier for us to segregate the posts which are really critical and which needs attention right so this kind of automation can help clinical psychologists to uh, to be attentive to those users who are at risk similarly if we talk about longitudinal study we have time varying analysis of patterns in historical timeline of users social media profile that means if i so if a social media user is posting some of this his thoughts and in uh, ideas on social media since let's say last 6 months or last one year then historical evolution of his thoughts during that timeline can from those from that data we can discover the patterns in which a person is mentally depressed or if if that person is uh, emotionally well so these kind of patterns can help us to access the suicidal ideation when it gets developed and such studies have been uh, undertaken in last few years uh, two to three years maybe ramit sahane has done path breaking work in this work in this area of longitudinal study if we talk about the existing techniques from social media data if, if there are computational methods to classify the data then people have used machine learning algorithm for example chancellor at all they have used uh, machine learning algorithms if we talk about deep learning algorithms then jia jia and sheen at all are uh, have done some of the most promising uh, research work in using deep learning and pre trained models for uh, for classifying the mental illness on social media um however there are different feature extraction features which have been extracted some of the handcrafted features which they have uh, concentrated more are on are linguistic features which they use in which they use language social features in which they use how people are interconnected to each other via social media platform uh, with in social networks and what kind of data uh, or what kind of information are they using in social media a kind of social meta data data about the users post another thing is users meta data like what what is the um, idea of using uh, the information about the user for instance uh, at what time do they post right and uh, what is the location in which the user is locating because there are many different aspects of the countries and how uh, in which kind of society that person is living in and then we have multimodal features like um, what kind of avatars they do they use on reddit what kind of dp do they have uh, is it dark or or is it bright and so on so these are the different features which are being used uh to for the computational methods now this is uh social co computational social systems which are used for mental health classification to give the output as an anxiety depression suicide risk or is it a normal text however if we are uh 
considering the causal analysis, then we need to identify the cause behind their intent. For instance, whatever thoughts they have about depression and suicidal tendencies, that we can consider as an intent of a user. Whatever text that person writes, that text is considered as uh, his personal thoughts, self-reported text, and out of that text, we need to identify two things. One is the cause behind the intent. And second is the intention of a user. For instance, if I know what love is, it is because of you. Now, if a person is happy, let's say there is any kind of a text, if I know what love is. So that is the intent of a user that that person knows what lo the love is. And it is because of you that is the uh, cause or the hidden cause or the reason behind that intent so we have two discourse arguments one is if i know what love is and the other discourse argument is it is because of you so what is the causal explanation causal explanation could be because of you those are the words which is the causal explanation behind the intention of knowing the love and this example is given by, is taken from this, uh, this credits are given to causal explanation analysis on social media. This work has been done by uh, Son and Schwartz et al. Uh, so they have done very uh, well established work in this area. Then we talk about social media corpus. If we are having different, different text, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, Every text have some kind of information. I am done with my life after two years with no job. Panic attacks and insomnia is deteriorating my mental peace. She has no time for me. Family is a myth, feeling lonely. So every every text has some or the other form of uh, the cause behind it. We talk about this um, cause detection. Then the first, second, third, and fourth, if we observe this uh, very closely, then first four texts have some kind of reason within that text. And the other text, like help me or I'll do something to myself. And life is useless. T5 and T6 do not have any reason behind it, be, within that text. But it is related to something, related, something related to mental illness. So T5 and T6 are uh, marked as zero because they do not have any cause. T1, T2, T3, T4 are marked as one. Similarly, if we need to identify some causal explanation, then we identify the cause or the reason behind that intent. For example, in T1, we have, I am done with my life after two years with no job. So done with my life is the intent of a user and no job is the cause behind it. So we need to give the causal explanations only. So we are taking up those phrases or set of words which are giving the causal explanation behind the intention of a user. So this much work has been done by uh, Son and Schwartz, but how we can address the causes of the mental health conditions for that we need to categorize some kind of causes. So for that we need uh, some categories which we have marked as, for example, if we mark these categories as these five categories, um, bias and abuse, jobs and career, medication, relationships and alienation. We figure out that in which category every text is going to. For example, let us consider T4 exam, 4. Cope up with my grades and university exams. So this is related, related to jobs and career. So it should be in T2. And then we have T2, let's say, panic attacks and insomnia. That means it is related something related to medication and it should be in T3. Uh, then we have after two years with no job. Uh, so this is rela something related to jobs and career. Again, it should be related to two. So this is how we segregate the information. Then we have research gaps and challenges. In this, we have long and complex text. For example, if we use real-time social media data, for example, Reddit, it has as short text as few words, like four or five words, and as long text as many, many words, like 4,000 words also. 
so the vari uh, variation within the text is too high and then it is difficult to train any model on such a vari variate various like variation in the text so if we talk about the availability of data set for uh, causal analysis then it is very very limited due to the sensitive nature of uh, data set then we have ethical constraints due to sensitive nature of data set so similarly we also have some kind of ethical constraints because it is very sensitive information and users do not agree that their uh, personal information should be revealed or something related then we have explainable ai models for causal analysis of uh, mental illness in which we need to uh, make these models responsible enough so that they can explain how they are working and how they are taking decisions so these are the major uh, research gaps and challenges which needs to be addressed which st still needs to be addressed and these are the new frontiers so this is uh, the this is something related to uh, how in person people uh, in person clinical psychologist uh, take and access the patients so new frontiers uh, should be related to cross sectional study to identifying reasons behind mental illness in a single post which may or may not be reliable and then longitudinal study time varying analysis of multiple posts from users historical timeline can give better insights about the cause behind mental illness so causal analysis can be studied at both the levels cross sectional study also and longitudinal study also uh, to summarize we have given some taxonomy then computational linguistics can determine mental health on uh, mental illness on social media post why do they do so how they do so to what extent they do so and then challenges and new frontiers we have addressed some challenges and new frontiers in this area so if you have any questions i'll be happy to discuss um thank you very much we have time for one or two you. questions from the audience one question here yes um, i'm curious yes, about, um, I, please <laughs> thanks for the talk i'm curious about the the categories that you choose um like how do you come up with precisely these categories and yeah uh, regarding the categories these are these categories are not um, well established as of now in the research work it is our ongoing ongoing research work with which we have just uh, communicated to elric conference one of our work which we have communicated to elric conference it is it has been done by in in uh, by considering all the discussions and all the uh, existing literature with clinical psychologist and uh, clinical psychologist uh, th uh, uh, clinical psychology theories so yeah uh, these categories have been formulated recently uh, in november after considering all the the entire literature survey so this is a recent work so yeah thank you Thank you very much. Uh, did I answer your question? Yes, thanks. Yes, he says yes. <laughs> Transmitting. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Seems not to be the case. So thank you very much for being with us virtually. And uh, yeah, the audience is thanking the speaker. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.